Mr. Fino here. This is Unit 3, Lesson 1 on the Origins of Judaism. And here in the background, you might be wondering what this is. It is some kind of piece of metal art, but it is the Star of David, which is one of the most common symbols you'll see in the Jewish religion or Judaism. Uh, in this section, you will learn how Judaism originated and developed. So again, that word Judaism, it's referring to the Jewish religion. So um, the Jews, people that are Jewish, they practice Judaism. In a few pictures here, we have a, uh, the Torah on the left, which is one of their sacred books. In the center, we have Abraham, who we will discuss, and he's this family on a journey. And then on the right, this is Moses carrying the Ten Commandments uh, that he received from Mount Sinai. So our first question is, where did the Israelites come from? And what's interesting is that the Israelites, later known as the Jews, originally lived in Mesopotamia, which it's cool because we, we already studied Mesopotamia. So this group of people, they originated in Mesopotamia and um, they were originally called the Hebrews. So when you see the words Israelite, Israel, Hebrews, all these terms are referring to descendants of the Jewish people. Uh, so the few pictures here is, uh, you can see the path of the ancient Hebrews, where they went from Mesopotamia, the city state of Ur, over here, they traveled north through the Fertile Crescent, eventually down into Canaan, which is modern day Israel. And they journeyed elsewhere throughout their history, but we'll start with that. All right, so the Torah, which I mentioned before, is one of the sacred books of Judaism. And the Torah contains ri written records, teachings, and hundreds of commandments that direct moral and religious conduct. So essentially tell them how to live their lives, how to live moral lives or lead the right way, um, how to conduct themselves properly. And before it was written down, it was passed down orally from generation to generation, meaning they just told stories. They, they told it, you know, by word of mouth. They told the stories and they taught each other um, before it was written down. So again, here on the left, this is a Torah, what it would look like in a temple these days in scroll form. On the right, we have uh, this is Moses. I believe he's carrying the Ten Commandments here. Um, I think this is Moses. And you know, the commandments are, again, they're telling them how to live their lives. And then the center just showing right or wrong, which is referring to the morals of uh, the Jewish religion, which can be found in the Torah. So the next question is, who were some important Jewish leaders? So the four important Jewish leaders we're focusing on in the section are Abraham, Moses, David, and Solomon. So the picture here on the left, this is the story of Abraham and his son Isaac, which you'll see in the DBQ uh, in this unit, but essentially Abraham's God asks him to sacrifice his son Isaac, and um, this is an image from that story. The center here, this is Moses parting the Red Sea in the story of the Exodus. Um, down here, this is King David playing his harp. And then we have, this is King Solomon in front of his temple. All right, so let's start with Abraham who is known as the father of the Jews. Abraham lived in the city-state of Ur in Mesopotamia around 2000 BCE. So again, he was from Mesopotamia, and that's about you know 4,021 years ago. And so while the Mesopotamians worshipped many gods, they were polytheistic, Abraham believed there was one true God. He was monotheistic, meaning he only believed in one God. And so when Abraham was 75 years old, it says in the, in the Hebrew Bible, his God told him to leave his country, his family, and travel to a promised land, which his God promised to him and his family. And Abraham listened, taking his family with him to Canaan. So images here, monotheism is, again, belief in one God. These symbols here represent three of the world's main current 
monotheistic religion. So kind of all started with Judaism, the Jewish religion, which is, again, this is the Star of David representing Judaism. And then later on, Christianity is a monotheistic religion, belief in one God. And finally, Islam, also a belief in one God. But with Christianity and Judaism, both have their roots in, sorry, Christianity and Islam both have their roots in Judaism. They trace back to, you know, individuals from, from this religion. And then lastly, this is a picture of Abraham taking his family with him to Canaan. Uh, a little bit more about Abraham. Um, at age 99, he made a covenant with his God. So it was essentially an agreement with his, with his God. And he agreed that his family would devote themselves to their God and he would bless them in return. Their God would bless them in return. So a covenant is kind of like an agreement. It's like an agreement uh, from both sides. And the Torah says that Sarah, Abraham's wife, had their son Isaac when she was 90 years old. That's what it says in the, in the, in the Hebrew Bible. Um, and they you know, thought that was kind of funny. Oh, well, that's, that can't happen. But that taught them that they should have faith in their God. Um, it is said that the Jewish people are descended from Abraham and Sarah. So from there, their son Isaac had a son named Jacob with a woman named Rebecca. And then Jacob had 12 sons who became the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, a few pictures here. Uh, we have, this is, I guess, Abraham making a covenant with his God. Um, and then... I think this is when uh, Abraham and Sarah are told that they will have a child. All right, the next important figure in Judaism is Moses, who was the leader of the Israelites. Uh, so hundreds of years after Abraham, who we were just talking about, the Israelites moved to Egypt and became wealthy and powerful. Right, they had a lot of land, a lot of animals. They, they were doing well. So fearful of their growing of strength, the Egyptian pharaoh forced them into slavery. He was worried that they would become too powerful. Um, and one of the other things that the pharaoh did was to try to control the growth of the population of the Israelites was he, as this picture on the left shows, he, he would um, throw the, the male babies, uh, Israelite babies, into the Nile River um, to try to control their population growth. That's what the Hebrew Bible says. And in response, Moses' God sent him to deliver the Israelites from slavery. The Torah says that when the Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites leave with Moses, his God sent ten terrible plagues to Egypt. And eventually the Pharaoh relented and released the Israelites, but then changed his mind, sending his army, which we'll see in a second. Here are the ten plagues of Egypt. Water turns to blood, frogs, lice, flies disease on livestock, um, unhealable boils, hail and fire, locusts, darkness, and finally death of the firstborn son. We'll see these um, when we watch the Prince of Egypt. So after right, the Pharaoh sent his army, uh, it says it's, it is said that Moses performed a miracle parting the Red Sea and saved the Israelites. And this departure from Egypt where they ran, they, they fled from Egypt from, from the Pharaoh uh, to freedom is known as the Exodus. Um, following that, on their journeys through the desert, it is said that Moses received the Ten Commandments from his God at Mount Sinai, and these commandments told the Israelites how to live and worship their God, and they're central to the Jewish religion. So here on the top picture here, this is a picture of uh, Moses closing the sea back up, and you can see the Egyptian army drowning. And then this picture on the left shows possible routes uh, of the exodus from Egypt. So you can see kind of where it is suspected they went right through here and eventually up into Canaan. Here are those Ten Commandments. Um, I'm not going to read them, but you can look through them if you like. Um, but this, these are the commandments that the Jewish people have agreed to follow. Uh, next, we have David and Solomon. David and Solomon, the kings of Israel. So hundreds of years after Moses, the Israelites are at war with the Philistines. Um, so again, this is hundreds of years after Moses. They're at war with the Philistines. And it is said in the Hebrew Bible that if an Israelite can defeat the fiercest Philistine warrior, Goliath, who was a supposed giant, 
they would become slaves to the Israelites. Um, so the Philistines were so confident in Goliath as a fighter that they said, well, if you guys beat us, we'll become your slaves. No one wanted to fight him, but eventually David, a boy, agreed to fight Goliath and took him down with a single with a sling and a single stone, it is said in the story of David and Goliath. Um, uh, eventually, David becomes the king of the Israelites and establishes them as a single nation, Israel. Uh, he created a strong central government, an army, courts, and officials, and he was also a poet and a musician. And uh, it was named Jeru uh, he named Jerusalem the capital city, and brought the Ark of the Covenant to the city, which is an important um, piece of uh, Hebrew and uh, Israeli history and and worship so here we have david celebrating the streets and playing his harp this is a picture from david uh, the story of david and goliath and then this is showing david with his army uh again a little bit more about david and solomon after david's death his son solomon became the king uh, so solomon built a magnificent temple to the house to house the ark of the covenant in jerusalem so david actually wanted to build the the temple but his God said he, he couldn't um, for certain reasons, so eventually Solomon did it. Uh, Solomon also established treaties with neighboring kingdoms, increased foreign trade, and developed copper mining. So he did a lot of stuff to kind of expand the empire. And Solomon was also famous for his wisdom. So a couple of pictures here. This is the, a picture, a rendering of the temple. And this is a story of that, that displays Solomon's wisdom, but... It essentially, well, you'll see it. You'll see it soon with the DBQ. And lastly, we have Naomi and Ruth. So Ruth was married to Naomi's son. So Naomi, uh, a Jewish woman, Ruth was married to her son. And when Naomi's husband and sons died, she decided to return to her homeland, Bethlehem. So the story of Ruth and Naomi goes that um, Ruth declared that she would stay with and support her mother-in-law as well as adopt her monotheistic religion of Judaism. So, you know, Ruth is an example of um, faithfulness to one's family. That's often uh, the lesson of, of Naomi and Ruth, Ruth and Naomi, a story of them. But here's uh, Ruth working in the fields to support her mother-in-law, and here they are together. So in summary, this lesson... In this lesson, we learned about the background and major figures of Judaism, which were Abraham, um, uh, Moses, David, and Solomon. All right, thank you.